In this video, we're going to talk about how to EQ your microphone effectively for you to improve your sound quality for your next stream or for your next piece of content. And the microphone we're using for this is the Fifine AM8. And collectively, it's gotten over 500,000 views on my channel. So we're going to use it because it seems like you guys like this microphone. It's a $50 USB and XLR microphone. Links will be in the description if you want to pick it up. By the way, this video is not sponsored at all or anything. I just feel like this is something that a lot of people have requested is how to improve their microphone sound and EQ is one of the first places to start. To get started, there's a couple things that we're gonna be using. One is the actual built-in OBS EQ, and the other is actually Reaper plugins, which you can get from the link in the description, or you can just Google Reaper plugins, and what you can see is you can install them for 64-bit or 32-bit, and here are all the VSTs, and you can use these in Wavelink, a whole bunch of other platforms, but we're gonna use it specifically inside OBS, but here's the one we're gonna be using today, which is REA EQ. To, we can talk about all of the different settings in here. The first step is to actually get to the filters for your microphone. And to do this, find your microphone, right click it and click filters. This is gonna pop up all of the filters you have active for your microphone. For me, all I have is a limiter. We're gonna delete this right now and we're gonna start fresh with just EQ. Now, as you can see inside OBS, you actually have a three band equalizer and this gives you very simple controls, highs, mids and lows. This is like what you used to have in your car stereo system where your mid you would usually pull out, you would bump your lows and highs. And this is also something that you would see in the music industry, something called the California Smile. So what we would do is actually pull the mids down, maybe 3 dB, push the highs about 3, and then push the lows about 3 to give us a little bit more of a boomy sound. You can make this adjustment and see exactly how it fits with your sound, but for me, I feel like there's a little too much highs on this microphone specifically. And again, don't copy exactly what I'm doing here. This is what you need to mess around and see what it sounds like for you. You can always toggle it on and off by clicking the eyeball. So here is this testing one, two, three. This is a sound test with the EQ on testing one, two, three. This is a sound test of the EQ off. So when you turn it on, this is what you're going to have. And you can see you can go really drastic. Like I've just blew out the bass there and you can also pull it out to get more of that like telephony feel. So you can really get kind of I don't know, creative on what you have here, even toggles different EQs on. So if you wanna have some like really high trebly sounds, you could totally do that. You can even push the mids so it sounds a little bit more boxy. So you could have it like where you're doing voice comm sounds. These are some cool things you can do to make some customizations. But for you specifically, I would start here, pull the mids, boost the highs and the lows. And what that really does is just pulls the boxy sound out of our voice. You might've gotten this far in this video and this could be all you really need. We're gonna want one step further, I'm going to explain just a little bit more using the Reaper plugins. So to use a Reaper plugin, you actually have to hit the plus sign and choose a VST 2.x plugin. Now, obviously, you would have had to install the Reaper plugins by now. But once you do, you can see the drop down and you'll see every single Reaper plugin that you've installed and any others that you would have access to. And you can see we have REA EQ standalone right here. And we can click open plugin interface. And so now we actually get a visual EQ of what we were using and now we can make even more adjustments by default they give you four parameters here and most likely you'll end up with five or six depending on what you're looking for but we're going to talk about Hertz specifically and what you see under here is actually 50 100 200 300 500 uh, etc and these are actual Hertz which is just cycles per second and these are vibrations and these equal pitch so when you have a certain pitch which means if you're a higher pitched person or lower pitched version your sound and your actual signature will lie differently onto the EQ graph, which is why every microphone should be tuned specifically to you. Next, when you're looking at this, you actually see that some things are always going to be there. For example, even if I'm quiet, you still see a rumble really low on this microphone, below 50. I'll be quiet so you can see it. So what you'll see here is this is pretty typical. Air conditioning, computer fans, things that are around you that would actually create a rumble are gonna be below this. And what we're gonna do is actually treat EQ1, this first piece right here, as something called a high pass. And what that does is it will scoop off everything that's below that, and in all honesty, the names are a little backwards. So you would think a high pass would be on the upper end, but it's actually on the lower end. So what we're doing is now you can see there's the little faded darker line back there. That's what it was actually happening before the adjustments, and then the lighter yellow line is what's happening 
after the adjustments. So when I'm quiet, you can see it's pulled off everything below that. And a really good way to start this is probably to go around 80 uh, for that frequency, and you can go up to about 120. Once you go past that, you're pulling out some of the bass of the voice, so I would hesitate to do anything above 120. And now, specifically with me, I do have a bass voice. So what I do is to take my second EQ band right here, and I'm going to find it somewhere between 200 and 300. And what I'm going to do is just adjust this frequency. We're going to go down to about 200. And gain is just like what we saw earlier. Up will make it louder for this specific frequency, and down will make it actually go lower. Underneath that, you see bandwidth, and this is how tight the actual adjustment is. So we're gonna make this adjustment. We're gonna go up maybe about three dB. You're gonna see me get a little bit more bass, but you can see there's a curve that goes up. If I pull this down, you can see that it actually flattens out that curve all the way to the point where I can make it raise just a specific frequency. This could be good to remove S's, like a de -er, but in this case, we're just going to kind of just tighten it up a little bit. I want to boost my bases so it feels like it's got pro more prominence, more presence, uh, but I don't want to be boomy, which I can do if I continue to boost this. You can see how boomy it gets. It's a little too much, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it around three. The next one I'm going to do is actually this EQ band number three here. I'm going to go ahead and pull it down to around 450, 500. We're actually going to aim it right around 500. And I like to pull out some of the boxiness of my voice. And I'll show you why here. If I pull it up, you'll start to hear a lot more of the boxy center of my voice. This is where I want to not have this coming through. I want to lower this actually down just a touch and it'll give me a little bit more rounded tone, especially if I'm going to be using like a dynamic microphone, even a condenser microphone. This could be really good to kind of bring the presence onto your voice and make it feel a little natural. 500 is pretty typical for a male voice, an upper male, a lower female voice. But when it comes to placement here, depending on if you have a higher voice, you might move this further up, maybe towards six or 700. If you have a really deep voice, you might move it a little lower and shift all your EQ down. Again, everything is subjective. We're going to aim for around 500 and we're going to pull that down just a couple dB, nothing too crazy. Uh, and then you can always enable or disable this band to be able to see how it's working. We're going to leave this one enabled and the next one we're going to do is actually band four. I'm going to pull this to around 1000 and we're going to use another different name here. So normally we have band which is that specific adjustment like we had on number three. Here you have other things. There's notch, band pass, you have low and high pass, you have shelves and that's actually what we're using now is a high shelf. And so what I'll do is if I just, uh, not the frequency, we'll leave this about a thousand. If I increase the gain, you'll see everything above this gets increased. Now you're going to get more of the presence, the sibilance, the s -s 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 s's, or you're going to feel that a lot more prominent. It's going to be sticking out a little bit more. And that's the shelf. Anything above that frequency now gets raised. If I did other things, just like a band, you can see that's where it scoops it up. I want to use this as a high shelf because I kind of want to boost everything above about a thousand. And I'm going to add one more EQ, which you can do right here, which is add band. And number five, I'm gonna do a low pass. Now the low pass is just like the high pass we used before at number one where we scooped off all of the stuff at the front. I'm gonna use a low pass, which is actually going to scoop the stuff at the top, which would be things like anything that's got a metallic sound, you know, whirring, you know, fans that's got some sounds, some electrical stuff. This will pull some of that stuff out. So I'm gonna set this somewhere around like 16, 17K. And this microphone specifically only goes to capture up to 16,000 Hertz. So in essence, I'm not really gaining anything putting any above that. So I wanna maybe put just a little below, maybe like 14,000 or so. You can see there's a scoop up there. Now to test what this sounds like, Again, I can actually turn off the icon, and this is what it sounds like without the EQ. This is what it sounds like with the EQ. However you feel about this, this is a really good way of figuring out what your EQ is like. There's another piece that you could do, kind of like a de -er. You can add a band and actually go somewhere around like four to 6,000. We're going to aim around 4,000. We're going to set this to a notch, and we're actually going to tighten the octave to somewhere really tight, and this is what's gonna pull some of the S's out. This is where it's a lot of the S's are. And so you can open up the notch 
and kind of pull some of that sound out. You can really adjust, make those adjustments to even add a de -esser. You can play around with this. I don't really use this too much uh, just because I don't think it's necessary all the time, but if you have a microphone that's really sensitive, even headset microphones will pick up S's a lot. This could be a good thing to do is just to pull out somewhere around the four to 5,000 to pull some of the S's out. And that's a really quick tutorial on how to EQ your microphone. You're currently hearing the post EQ with this AM8. Please let me know if this was helpful. And if it was, smash the like button because it really shows help for the algorithm. Other people will be able to get some benefit out of it. And check out one of these two videos. This one especially because this talks about this microphone and if it's a good option for you. And this one making a big comparison of a lot of other microphones. Thank you for watching and trusting me with your time today. And y'all have a good day.